which it talks about uh, you know one uh, one being and yet three persons in the Godhead so let me try and illustrate this as best as I can because this I think is uh, that this touches the nerve of the heart and the heart of what the Christian faith is all about C.S. Lewis in one of his books talks precisely about this analogical uh, uh, comparison between God and human beings and he says if you take a dimension in life and add a second dimension to it then a third dimension to it he said with each added dimension you have greater capacity and greater uh, greater possibilities of, of uh, that which can be actualized if you take one dimension you get a straight line you take two dimensions you get a figure you take a third dimension you can get objects and he said when you break these dimension, dimensions down the fundamental components remain the same but the accretion of those components give you greater possibilities so when you got a finite being and a, and a, and a contingent being and a limited being but you've got one dimension in which you're describing the very nature of being you add to that now the possibility of an infinite being an uncaused being and, uh, and, 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 and a being that is non-dependent you get the possibility of a, of, an, of, a, of a being with greater complexity and the illustration I like to give to you is this it is not even so much that you start from the end nature of God and come down here you start from where we are to understand what this might be fishermen knew there was a difference between one and three Paul the rabbi knew there was a difference between one and three Luke the physician knew there was a difference between one and three these are not kind of airheads floating around trying to posit a new kind of a concept to just pre to, to give a mathematical incongruity here what they are talking about is that in the complexity of the very being of God there is an I you relationship within the Godhead now to go from where we are to where God is I think it is critical we, we follow this kind of reasoning here it is this the greatest search for philosophy of all time has been the search for unity and diversity the greatest search has been for unity and diversity the early Greek philosophers were looking at it and then out comes somebody with four unities earth air water and fire so his student comes on the scene and says wait a minute those are four not one so we coined the word quintessence what is the fifth essence that unites these four essences the word university to find unity in diversity on every American coin e pluribus unum out of the multiplicity you find one now how do we explain unity and diversity in the effect which is what this world is you and I are part of the effect we've got unity and diversity in the effect of this universe the only way to explain unity and diversity in the effect is if you've got unity and diversity in the first cause and only in the Trinity is there unity and diversity in the community of the Trinity if you do not grant that you actually have even a bigger problem to deal with for example in the Islamic concept of God which is a monadic concept of Allah and they of course repeatedly throw against the Christian this attitude that we've got a plurality of gods we've got a plurality of gods that is not so the Lord your God is one in the complexity of the Trinity there is an I you and a relationship in the Godhead himself if you've got a monadic concept of God apart from the Trinity then you end up with another philosophical problem if God ever says he loves who was he loving before the creation if God says he speaks who was he speaking to before the creation so communication and affection or love is contained in the Godhead right from the beginning where God speaks in the community of the Trinity where God loves in the Christian faith only does love precede life in every other faith life precedes love so we end up defining love on our terms there is no referent against it but if you see the love expressed within the concept of the Trinity and God's Jesus's prayer was that you and I may be one even as he and the father are one 
All I will say to you is Mortimer Adler, the great Jewish philosopher who was a latecomer to Christ said, there will have to be majesty and mystery in God himself. And he says, to me the mystery of the Trinity is a revelation of how God is complete in himself, in one being, the three persons as they relate in love and in language. No sophisticated mathematician need to tell the four writers of the Gospels that one and three are not the same. And yet they were hard and purposeful in the reflection of what the doctrine of the Trinity is all about. If you look at your heart, and I look at mine, you know, my daughters, are, uh, I mentioned yesterday, are in Indonesia. They just left Indonesia last night and uh, flew into Thailand. They are part of the tsunami relief, my two daughters in their 20s. This morning as I spoke to her arriving in Chiang Mai in Thailand, she said, Dad, never in my life have I seen what I have just seen coming from Aceh. I've never seen anything like this. Bodies are still floating on shore. Members and parts of limbs are coming on shore. And you know, here they were for nearly 48 hours. They couldn't eat or drink anything, no bathrooms or anything of the kind. What is it that drives humanity to go and reach out to these so stranded and so hurting? I think it's the love of our fellow human beings that we are willing to go and do that. If love is the heart of existence and God is love, it is within the Trinity itself that we hunger for relationships. You hunger for relationship, I hunger for relationship. Existentially, I believe it is revealed in the Holy Trinity himself, where the Father loves the Son, and the Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. Is it one and three? No. I believe it's one in one sense, three in another. It's not a mathematical issue. It's the very nature of being. Unity, diversity in the community of the Trinity. There's both majesty and mystery. And I believe when we see God face to face, we'll find out why it is he made us thus to hunger for relationships ourselves.